Hello everyone, so today I am here to start a vlog, a reading vlog. So basically, I didn't know how to do this because for this book I really wanted to do a full sit down coherent review but I also can't wait any longer to read this so I decided to do a vlog reading it and then I will do another coherent sit down like review video for it when it's been about a month and I have like sat on my feelings and everything but I still wanted to do a vlog to be able to get like my initial thoughts to this book. And that is of course A Library of Legends by Jenny Chang. If you guys don't know like full transparency, Jenny Chang wrote my all time favorite book Three Souls. She also wrote wrote another one of my favorite books, Dragon Springs Road, which is not my all-time fave, so Three Souls usually gets the kind of title. <laughs> but um, Library of Legends is her new book, and again, full transparency, Jani did send me this book herself. She and I do chat sometimes. We are friendly with each other, so I am going to be reviewing this like I review every book, I am completely honest with you guys, even if it's an author I really love. You guys should know that from me giving some Murakami books like two or three stars. So I am so excited to be reading this. I'm so incredibly blessed to be able to get her books early. I got Dragon Springs Road early and I got this book early and I am so grateful to Janie and her team for giving me these books and I started this book last night and I'm ready to talk about it. So yeah, I only got about 50 pages into this one, but again, I wanted to do a reading vlog for it, so I will be hopefully just popping in and updating you guys every time I read a significant chunk of this book or have something to say. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, so the first 50 pages, firstly, I will just say it was so exciting to see that Library of Legends was actually an April book choice for book of the month, which is so exciting and Janny and I were so excited for her. It's such a big opportunity but <laughs> Book of the Month didn't necessarily uh, promote it correctly. It said it was a historical fantasy. I saw that and I immediately was like no it's not. I haven't even read it. I know it's not a historical fantasy. This is a historical fiction novel. Jenny Chang's books sometimes have a little bit of a magical element to them, like Dragon Springs Road had fox spirits and stuff like that, um, and this one has kind of this magic library, which I'm, I don't know, it might actually be based on a real library, I actually don't know how much of this is truth and how much isn't, but it's definitely not a fantasy. Let's just say that. But yeah, getting into the first 50 pages, I will obviously be talking about this book in detail. So if you don't want spoilers, probably don't watch this video. Just wait for my full review to come out, which will probably come out either before this video or very, very soon after. So, but yeah, the first 50 pages, I'm not gonna lie. I don't love the writing so far, but I must say, this book is very, very different from Janie's first two books. There is so much information that we as a reader need. So it's been not like necessarily info dumpy, but just very factual and very just straight to the point rather than very like literary or like internal monologues or thinking kind of stuff. I obviously already do have quite a few tabs that I want to put into this book already 50 pages in, but usually Janie's writing is some of my favorite because it's so simple but so so beautiful at the same time. It's like she'll just say like a three word sentence and it just punches you in the freaking face and it's amazing. So far I haven't gotten that but again it's only 50 pages in and we needed a lot of information because basically this book is about it follows a school that is evacuating from Nanking non non which is chi in China and they are evacuating from the Japanese who are bombing the city and it, it's in um, 1937 China so it is during basically the rape of Nanking and we are following a group of people who all go to Minghua University again don't know if that's a real university I don't know how much of this book is factual versus not I will definitely do some research later but <laughs> we are following a gang of people about 123 people who are from Minghua University and they are traveling from Nanking to the west and we are mostly following a young girl named Lian and a boy named Xiao who they 
are come from two very very different families. Shao is very very rich and he was trying to get out of Nanking before um, it started getting bombed to get back to his family because his family wants him back because he's very like precious because he's so rich and smart and he's the son and then Leon was trying to get out because her mom wants her to meet her in Shanghai and Leon was only at this university because she is a scholarship student because she can actually afford school and so we follow those two perspectives which has been very interesting we also got another perspective from a professor I've met Jenny I don't believe has ever done different perspectives I'm almost positive her three souls for sure only follows Leon I don't think Dragon Springs Road changes perspective either so that's also a really really different part of this book we had to get so much information at this very beginning so basically all that's happened so far in the first 50 pages is the first bombings and then leon and xiao meet and then they start evacuating from the university and again we need a lot of information we need to kind of know what's happening in the war at this point in time because i don't know about you but i didn't know what was going on in the china versus japan at in 1937 I didn't really know what was happening at that point so we need a lot of historical context and then also we need to basically learn all about the library of legends which is a library of books that basically catalog Chinese history culture like songs his like all of that kind of stuff and so it's been very very factual so far I'm really hoping Jenny's beautiful writing style comes out later but so far very very factual but this is probably one of the most interesting plot lines I've read. I've never read anything like this and so far I'm very very intrigued but I also must say I always hate when kind of something that's going on in my own personal life is affecting my reading or how I'm reading a book but it's also kind of inevitable like every time you read a book whether you know it or not your mental state what's going on around you what's going on in the world is affecting your reading of it which is kind of why there's this idea that like books come to you at the perfect time and it's been it was really really interesting reading this last night because just as a preface i guess i am currently filming this it's april 4th which means in 2020 which means i am currently in quarantine from covid19 where most of the world also is and it's really interesting reading this book that's about like an actual physical militaristic war because a lot of what's going on and a lot of what's being talked about in like a psychological and like internal sort of way has been a lot of what's t being talked about and being felt right now for this kind of I guess a war on like a virus and it's really interesting to be reading it because it is like the like kind of bombings and rape of Nanking is such a historical moment and like kind of considered such a horrible horrible time in um history not even just Chinese history in history in general and so it's really interesting reading this like horrible horrible stuff and the psychological damage that's happening to these people and kind of being able to relate it to right now it's terrifying and obviously when Jenny first wrote this and planned on having it released in May of 2020 she had no clue that this was going to be happening so it's kind of one of those books that's like if you read it when it first comes out you might weirdly be able to relate to these characters in a way that you probably wouldn't have been able to if you read it you know six months ago or you know in five years or something like that the like conversation and like psychological conversation in this book right now is just so timely and it's been a really weird reading experience because I'm kind of like I shouldn't be able to relate to these people going literally through the rape of Nan Gang but I kind of can and it's weird. <laughs> that was the thing that stuck out the most to me in the first 50 pages was just how weirdly relatable this book was and how weirdly like relatable an actual war is to like a kind of viral war. I don't really know what we're calling this COVID-19 thing but yeah so far that is kind of my feelings on the first 50 pages is so far it's very factual which I see is very necessary but I do really hope it gets more narrative and literary in the next little bit and it's weirdly relatable and it's weird. Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> not, not that that's the book or Jenny Chang's fault that's just a weird thing to think about in your brain but yeah this book is about 400 pages and I definitely or actually it's a little under it's about 358 pages so yeah I definitely plan on 
trying to trek through this in the next week or so because in a week it is the Murakami Marathon so I'll be trying to finish this before that. You guys unfortunately won't see this video until like May, middle of May. Anyways, I will update you guys again the next time I read this. Woo! And we back. It's been a couple of days, but I have read another section of the Library of Legends. So I might have spoken too soon about this not being a fantasy novel. I'm very confused now because, I mean, I don't really read the synopsises on back of, on the back of books. Like, I'll read the first, like, couple of sentences of it because I, like everyone else, feel like synopsises can give way too much away. And this one totally does. Literally something just happened a hundred pages in. It's in the synopsis. And I was like, what? But it is, in, it is on the back of the book. So maybe I spoke too soon about it not being a full fantasy novel. I don't think it's going to become a fantasy novel. But we are getting a little bit more magic and magical realism than I was expecting, I guess. So basically, we got to the point where Leon basically, like her friends Sparrow and Xiao are kind of a part of this legend that is in the Library of Legends and I guess she she hasn't put it together. We as a reader have put it together and also there was this whole scene of like someone talking to a water dragon like a dragon spirit god so it's not fantasy really but there are like I guess these interactions with celestial beings and gods and stuff which have been interesting but it seems that Xiao and Sparrow are a part of this kind of legend that is called what was it called the willow star and the prince which basically this like mo like all of the stars have gods like they're minor gods but basically this god of one of the stars the willow star came down to earth as a girl and fell in love with this prince and they got married but then the prince was ex executed and basically the queen mother told the willow star that she could join the prince during his reincarnations and if he could get her to like make like be in love with her like make him love her again she can keep him like she can bring him back to the heavens but she can't tell him that like they're part of this myth and like that he is the prince like that kind of storyline it's very interesting so far because we are reading from leon's point of view mostly we get a little bit of shad's point of view so she's kind of watching this happen rather than us being like kind of in the actual story i guess but yeah that so far has been really really interesting also again there is the, like this interesting kind of idea with these dragon gods that we had an interaction with it seems like we might get a lot of the different stories that are in the library of legends because basically it's like this story gets introduced and then like the weird <laughs> magical realism -y kind of thing happens so i am interested to see like kind of what other gods or uh celestial beings we're going to meet i am also just a little bit confused because it seems like sparrow has several different names like she gets called sparrow by leon and xiao but then like one of the professors who seems to understand who she is like has figured out that she's the blister just calls her star and then i think someone else called her a different name it's getting a little confusing i'm not gonna lie i'm also very very disappointed to say that the writing still isn't great like I'm kind of sad because Jenny Chang again has one of my favorite writing styles and so far it's just been very just straight to the point I guess there hasn't been a lot of like very beautiful writing in this so far um the dialogue is also very very choppy and I can't tell if she was going for like just a different style this time or what because I don't think this would have bothered me if I wasn't expecting really really pretty writing but so far it's definitely not my favorite um but i am really really interested in the story i think this is the first like i'm always interested in jenny chang's stories like her previous two books had really interesting stories but mostly those are very character focused and so this is kind of her book her first book that's very very plot focused i guess and more event focused because we are just like following these characters during like a war and like their movement from the city into the countryside but also this like kind of plot line with Sparrow and Xiao and it's much more event and plot driven than her previous two books. I will say one other critique I have is just a personal one is the fact that I hate stories about people traveling places. It's why I don't really like the Two Towers and the Lord of the Rings series. 
in a lot of fantasy books I always like hate the second book because they're always moving um I don't I always find it just so boring just like reading about these characters walking from one place to another and I'm just that's gonna be this entire book so I'm a little bit nervous about that um but so far I am really enjoying what I'm reading I just have had a couple little critiques I my thing is I set my expectations so freaking high because Jenny Chang has written two of my favorite books ever so and also my all-time favorite book ever so I feel like almost bad like having it at such high expectations but like that's just that's that's what it is. I just have really high expectations. So um, I'm definitely going to try to read a good chunk of this today because I don't even know if I said I'm at about 103 pages and I'm at chapter 13. Um, and today I just did all of my like homework and stuff early this morning. So I will have most of the afternoon to sit around and read. So that is going to be my plan is to get a good chunk of this read. I feel like maybe another 100 pages read. So then I'd have about 100 pages left. Um, yeah, maybe we'll try that, but 200 pages left actually. It's almost 400 page book. Yeah, 360 pages. So I'd have like 160 pages left, but those are my thoughts so far. I'm very interested to see where this kind of new plot with the star and stuff goes. And we read another 100 pages of Library of Legends, so I have another update for you guys. I'm on 207 pages into this, and yeah, the last 100 pages, the plot has definitely, like, picked up a lot. We have had a murder, which, so it's kind of turned into, like, a murder mystery kind of plot line. We're trying to figure out who murdered this girl and why also. It's also got a lot of commentary on like the Communist Party in China at this point because the girl who got murdered was part of the Communist Party and like a big advocate for it. So they're wondering if she got murdered because of that and also by who. And then I just got to a part where our main character, Leon's best friend, also just joined the communist party and got really like aggressive about it and she got put in jail and like taken to jail and they're trying to get her to a camp to like re-educate her and like make her not a communist and so that's where i'm currently at um so we haven't gotten a huge like plot i guess advancement in the prince and the willow star kind of stuff we haven't really read from shadow's point of view in a while but we got more kind of i guess kind of war plot line like this had obviously focused on the war quite a bit but like not a lot of stuff that was actually happening from it that like was affecting these characters besides obviously just having to move from place to place but now we have characters like actually being affected by it and communism basically but yeah so yeah the plot has definitely picked up and I definitely feel like we're getting more used to these characters and like a better insight into their characterization from those last hundred pages but I am wondering what's gonna happen next I want more of the library of legends though for sure because every time we've gotten to like kind of read excerpts from them we've gotten really cool kind of magical things happening um and we haven't since the last time I updated. So I'm hoping we get a little bit more in this next chunk. I am hoping to read another like 100 pages probably today and then I'd only have like 60 pages to read and finish it tomorrow which sounds like a good plan to me. So yeah I'm gonna go and read some more of this. I am still obviously really enjoying it. It is definitely just very different from the other Jenny Chang books that I've read. The writing is still not as beautiful. It's very much plot and kind of event based still and the dialogue is a little stilted but other than that it's been very entertaining very interesting and again it's been really weird reading this while COVID-19 pandemic is happening because it is weird how many things that these characters are discussing in this book from the war and like literally the bombing of China and Nanking and stuff that we're talking about currently it's really really weird it's very weird timing so yeah, I'm gonna go try to read another 100 pages of this and I'll let you guys know what I think. And we have read another 100 pages of this. I am very close to the end. I only have like 60 pages left. So I will definitely be reading the end of this tonight, probably in the bath because I have to write an essay for most of today. But I'm definitely going to be finishing this today and probably wrapping up my feelings tomorrow. So obviously I have quite a few new feelings about this book, but like... 
I don't want people to get the wrong idea if I say that I'm disappointed in this book because that makes it sound like I'm hating it and it's like a bad book which it's not but I feel like I was going to new books by like authors that I love with exponentially high expectations like I when I get a new Murakami book a new Jenny Chang book any author that I have absolutely adored my expectations are absolutely through the roof and I recognize that and so when it doesn't meet my expectations I'm usually let down especially in this case like if I had just fully read the back of the book or you know wait had to wait until the book was out and got to see other reviews of it I probably wouldn't have had as high of expectations as I did because this simply isn't the story that I was expecting what I was expecting from this book was three souls or dragon springs road which Honestly, an author shouldn't just keep writing the same books over and over. So it's a good thing that Jenny Chang is like expanding and like kind of going in a new direction with her books. But going into this, I can't not expect my favorite book. Like I was expecting a quiet, family driven, historical fiction book focusing on women. And that's not what this is. It just simply is not. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just not what I was expecting. So I'm a little let down by it. I just want to put that out there because I'm not going to lie to you guys and be like, oh my God, this is my new favorite book. But I also don't want you guys to think that me saying I'm disappointed means it's bad. Basically, I think this book would be fantastic for people who like fantasy and want to get into literary or historical fiction. I think I said at the very beginning it's not a fantasy, it's not, but it does have a lot of characteristics of fantasy books. Um, I would never classify this as a fantasy, I would maybe call it like fabulous literary fiction or historical fiction, um, but this has a lot of elements of fantasy to it. It has a lot of background and information that kind of build this world, even though it is a real world, it is China in 1937, it is still a world that not most of us know about and definitely needs to be kind of built up to be able to understand the story. So there's a lot of world building and then it's a very classic fantasy trope of like moving from one place to another place and like the traveling kind of aspects of a lot of fantasy novels. I would also say that the writing is very very similar to a fantasy novel where it's not very flowery and overly pretty or overly like descriptive or anything. It's pretty simple and straightforward which I know some fantasy books obviously do have that very flowery writing like Lainey Taylor or something but most of them have that more straightforward writing style. I mean we even changed point of views which I don't feel like it's very common in a, like a literary fiction novel and obviously there's like the folklore behind it. There's the Chinese folklore that is very much a huge inspiration to this book and it's very very fantasy-esque but put in a mostly contemporary slash historical real world setting. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. It's just not what I was expecting. Um, so at the moment, I am feeling that little bit of letdown of like, this isn't the book that I was expecting from this, but I am really excited to see how it ends. It definitely has me very hooked. That's another thing that's very similar to a fantasy book is it's much less character focused and much more plot and event focused and things happening. So Again, I think someone who loves fantasy but wants to get into adult fiction, lit fic, historical fiction would love this. Like, it would definitely be a really great stepping stone. Um, but as someone who just doesn't like fantasy, it's not as amazing. And I'm definitely interested to see how it ends, but I, d I, I feel like at the moment this is about a 3.5, 3.75, more like a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Like, rounded up to a 4. But... It's definitely just a step down from the fact that Three Souls and Dragon Springs Road were five stars for me. But I will obviously let you guys know if the end, maybe the ending will absolutely blow my mind. Who knows? I am very excited to read it either way. So yeah, I will let you guys know my final thoughts after I finish it. I'm wearing the exact same thing as I was yesterday and I'm in the same spot, but it's the next day. So I finally finished The Library of Legends. I shouldn't say finally, it took me like four days. <laughs> but I finished The Library of Legends by Jenny Chang and because I read the last 60 pages last night and what 
how do I feel about this book? I ended up giving it a 3.75 out of 5 stars, which obviously, as I was talking about yesterday, I am just slightly disappointed in this book. It's not necessarily a book that I, like, would have enjoyed. Like, I don't know if I just, like, read the back of this and had no clue who the author was or anything. I don't think I would have probably picked it up, but I am happy that I read it because I did enjoy it, but I was just slightly let down by it. But we're gonna talk about other things besides that because I went on for too long about that yesterday. So the ending. I feel like, I'm not gonna lie, the ending was kind of weird. Like, not like the very end, but the last 60 pages were just very strange to me because like this entire book, like this much of this book, we were traveling around, like traveling from uh, Nanking out to the west and then from the west back to Shanghai. And then the last 60 pages felt like a completely different book. like. It was all about Leon and Xiao in Shanghai very separately. So it felt like just a very different book because it's a lot about like Leon and her mom and like this obviously like a very like a thing that a lot of people would be going through because of the war with just trying to find somewhere to live and work and everything but it just it was I don't want to say it was like unnecessary because I guess it showed a lot about the war but I did find myself going like I don't I don't care like I just I want to see what was happening with the Library of Legends and I want to see what was happening with this Willow Star and the Prince kind of storyline which we do get but like I wanted more about that I also really wanted more about um I don't even know if I mentioned it but like one of the plot lines kind of happening with um Sparrow and like the whole Willow Star thing was that the gates to the heavens were closing and Sparrow had to kind of choose whether she wanted to stay mortal and finally actually die and not be immortal anymore in this life or if she wanted to leave the prince aka Xiao forever and live in the heavens and what she kind of wanted to do with that and everything so I feel like if we, we get if we definitely got closing to that I just wish we'd gotten more like all of this kind of stuff like pages upon pages about just like trying to find somewhere to live and like money and stuff it just felt a little unnecessary to me and kind of boring to be completely honest I wanted more about the actual plot line um but then the ending was good I thought it was pretty good we get this little girl who like we met like 200 pages ago shows up at the end and like Sparrow and her family like adopt her which I thought was really really cute and then there was some cute stuff with Xiao and Leon getting together but like it also was a little bit rushed again I wish like the 60 pages had been dedicated to that um rather than like 10 at the very very end um I also do wish we'd gotten more of Xiao and Leon's relationship building like I knew that they were going to end up together and it was very obvious that that's the way it was going but I feel like the what I wrote in my Goodreads review was I feel like the dialogue I the writing definitely got better as it went along like I was very much like this is more Jannie Chang's writing style after like probably page 100 150 but I felt like the dialogue was very very stilted the entire way through and I don't know whether she was trying to write it more similarly to how people would probably actually be talking to each other back then but it definitely didn't allow the characters to really open up to each other and like form relationships with one another I'd say that the best dialogue happened between Leon and Mei Rong who was her friend but like there was definitely uh, quite a bit of back and forth between her and Xiao but it was very stilted so although I could definitely see that they were going towards those two being in a relationship at the end it didn't really feel very like natural I want to say like it was obvious it was going to happen but I wish we'd gotten more of them being together and like talking to one another and getting to know one another I guess uh again this is probably just my expectations being really high because that was one of my favorite parts of Three Souls was watching the different relationships build so this Xiao and Leon relationship it was obvious it was gonna happen I just wish we'd gotten more of it actually building up um the dialogue in this was pretty like like it served a purpose rather than just like letting characters develop it was kind of like dialogue was pushing the plot forward I almost wish this book had just been like another hundred pages to like flesh everything out a little bit more with that kind of stuff or we just gotten like the entire end 60 pages of them in Shanghai like building this relationship between the two characters but yeah I did end up enjoying it but it was definitely my least favorite of Jannie's books so far I am giving it a 3.75 out of 5 stars 
which some people think three stars is horrible I'm telling you it's not this is a good book it just wasn't what I wanted slash was expecting out of it um, I definitely think upon reread I might like this a lot better just because I will know what I'm getting into obviously but even on first read I have a ton of dog ears if you guys didn't know I like go through a book and dog ear things I want to tab and tab them later because I don't like taking myself out of a book to tab things so I will be tabbing it later but I obviously had a ton of stuff that I really really loved and wanted to put a note in so I did enjoy this not as much as I was hoping but I obviously love Jenny Chang and I love her books and I will definitely reread this sometime I definitely to reread like all the way through Three Souls, Dragon Springs Road, and then this. I was planning on doing that this time, but then I just really wanted to get to this and I didn't want to be burned out by the time I got to the new book. So eventually I will definitely reread all three books right through and I think I would like this better upon reread just because I know what I'm getting myself into at that point. But yeah, 3.75 out of 5 stars to the Library of Legends. I really do highly recommend that you guys go pick this up especially with what's happening in the world right now because a lot of authors that are, books are coming out right now are really really suffering in the publishing industry because no one's picking up books or going to bookstores so go and contact your local bookstore and ask them to send you this because a lot of them are still doing delivery or roadside pickup so pick up this book it came out May 12th. I think I'll be uploading this video after it's released, but I do highly recommend you go and pick it up, especially if you're a fantasy lover who wants to get into some literary fiction. I think you guys would really enjoy it. But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this vlog, reading vlog of the Library of Legends, and I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!